In this lesson, I'm going to explain shape effects. To follow along, open up Working Files, go to After Effects Projects, and double-click on 0807 Shape Effects. This project has two comps, one with three shapes and one with one. We're going to work on the one with three shapes first. I'm going to work on a number of effects in this comp, and the way that you access the effects are over here by the word Contents inside a shape layer. There's this Add Flyout menu. You click on that, and these are all the effects you can add to a shape layer. Now I'm calling them effects, but that probably isn't the proper term. These guys might be considered effects here, fill and stroke. These guys are shapes. These guys down here are sometimes called operators, but I'm gonna to refer to all these guys generically as effects. And we're gonna work with these effects starting here at offset paths and working down to zigzag. I explained merge paths in the previous lesson on shape presets. So we're gonna work on these guys down here. To add an effect, you simply click on it and that adds it. Here's twist added at the bottom there. It's twisted all three of those shapes. You can limit it to some number of shapes by moving it up the line here. Let's go a little bit higher so you can see the three shapes we have here. I'll limit it to just ellipse. There you go. So now it affects just ellipse and not the other two guys. Or we can do ellipse and rectangle, something like that. Now they're both like that. But I'm going to delete that and work on the ones I've already added. So there you go. We've got a bunch of effects here. I'm going to go through an order sort of from simplest to most complex. Round corners, I'll turn that on. Works like rounding a corner on a rectangle. You'll see how that works. More rounded like that. Doesn't do much to ellipse though, but takes the rectangle and makes it an ellipse. Also rounds the star to a certain point and then basically stops. That's round corner. Turn that off. Offset paths, let me click on that. Offset paths is like scale, but it's kind of unpredictable. Don't see much use for offset paths. You can see that it don't really work the way scale would work necessarily, particularly with the star there on the right. Close that, turn that off. Twist is where things start getting to be interesting. Twist, you start off with the default angle of 10 degrees. Zero, of course, would be no twist at all. We start twisting and look at the cool things that can happen here. The more we twist, the wilder it gets. We're gonna get some kind of galaxies here, a little bit of a Milky Way galaxy thing going on here. That's twist. And remember, you can keyframe these guys. Okay, turn off twist. Pucker and bloat work on the segments on the outside of a shape. Now, an ellipse you think might not have segments, but you'll see that pucker and bloat thinks it has segments. So when you bloat something, you're blowing out the segments, and when you pucker them, you're sort of sucking them in. But in the process, funny things happen to the vertices. So let's watch what happens when I bloat this guy out. You can see we're blowing him out there, but look what happens to the vertices there. Pretty cool. The more I go, well over 100, look at the stuff that can happen here. Wow. Let's go down to negative here and sort of make it a pucker. There we go. Just phenomenal, I think. That is one of the most enjoyable shape effects there is. Okay, turn that guy off. Zigzag is kind of similar. Zigzag kind of ratchets around the edge there like a saw. You can set the size of the zigzag like that. And how many ridges per segment? Remember, this is one segment here. Notice how many ridges per segment there, all right? You want the ridges to be round or hard edge like that. So right now they're hard edge. Go to smooth, that smooths them out a bit. So that's zigzag. And again, all these guys are keyframable. They're all animatable. Turn that one off. Trim paths is interesting. It has these properties very much like the range properties inside a text animation. You've got start and an offset. So what you're doing here is you're trimming the path starting from the top, basically, like so. And it looks a little odd when you've got fill, but you can trim around like that. You can determine the starting point or the ending point. And you can also use offset to kind of rotate around like that. What I think works better is when you use trim path only on the outside, only on the stroke. So I'm going to go up to the ellipse here. I'll just use the trim path on the ellipse. I'll open that up. I'm going to turn off the gradient fill to just have the stroke now. And as I move it around, just watch that one. All three of them will move here, but just watch this guy and see how that works here as I change the offset. You can kind of chase it around like that. Great way to have a path follow along and look like you're kind of pointing out, let's say, go this direction here, go this direction here. You can kind of use your pen tool to make a free form path and then use this to have it follow your path like that. All right, we'll turn that off and we'll go get our gradient fill back on inside the ellipse. There we go. All right, scrolling down a little bit farther. Now we've got wiggle paths and wiggle transform. Wiggle paths is the only one of these effects that actually self animates. So you go along here, you'll see that it wiggles. Not much of a wiggle there, but that's what's going on. It's wiggling all on its own. 
open it up and you can change the parameters. So how large are the wiggles like that? How many wiggles per second and how many details are they? Here are the wiggles per second. Right now it's two. You can make it frenetic like that. Or you can make it kind of slow by bringing it down to say 0.5, something like that. And it barely wiggles at all. Just kind of gradually changes over time. Those are the three main things, size, detail, and wiggles per second. You can change it from a hard edge like zigzag, corner, and smooth. Just the same kind of a process to kind of smooth things out. All right. That is wiggle paths. Too much fun, right? And then finally, wiggle transform, which is very much like wiggle paths, but when you do this, nothing happens. What's going on here? Well, wiggle paths has this transform property group down there. Take a look at that. It has all the things you saw before, wiggles per second, correlation, what have you. But down here, there's a transform property. You need to tell it what you want to wiggle. So you can wiggle the position, the X or the Y value, or both. So we'll do both, let's say. What's going to happen, it's going to wiggle within that range of 0 to 33 and 0 to 13. You can wiggle the scale. So it goes as much as 59% more, or whatever I've got there. We'll go down to, let's say, 40%. It'll go up to 40 and then down. Wiggle the rotation, so it goes within this limit, not exceeding 36 degrees, things like that. So now, when we wiggle, you'll see how that works. Each one behaves differently. All right, that covers just about everything except for the repeater. Now, the repeater warrants a special presentation, so I'm going to go to this other comp. We're going to talk about the repeater here. It's just this one shape, and I'm going to add the repeater to it. I'm going over here to add, add the repeater. And you're going to see that immediately there are three of those guys now. Let's open up the repeater and see what's going on here. Repeater says three copies, which I don't know if that's really true or not. It's two copies plus the original, but okay, we'll go with three. Let's change this to something like 15 copies, all right? And there they are strung out along there. I can see them all by just dragging the first one over here to the left, and those are the other guys, all 15 all together. Now, the fun begins when you open up the transform for the repeater, not for the entire layer, but for the repeater. Let's go there and take a look at it. It has the standard transform properties. Notice that the position is 100x and 0y. That means that each additional repeated thing is 100 pixels to the right. 100 in the x value is 100 pixels to the right. The scale is 100%, meaning each additional one is equal to the first one in size. So it's 100% of the first one. Nothing's rotated. The starting opacity is 100% and the ending opacity is 100%. So let's say I drop the scale from 100% to let's say 90. I'll just type in 90 here. What's going to happen? Well, the second one will be 90% of the first one, the third will be 90% of the second, and on down the line. So if you have 10 of them, that doesn't mean that the 10th one will be zero. It just means each one drops by 10% from the previous one off to infinity. Rotation means how much each one will rotate from the previous one on the anchor point. So I'll rotate that just a little bit. You can see that they rotate each one just a little bit from the previous one. So each one, let's say, is 10 degrees, then That'll be 10, that'll be 20, 30, 40, like that on down the line. The starting opacity, 100, I can drop that and have it just go toward the end, like that. So the ending opacity is at 100, not the start. I can have the ending opacity drop off, which looks kind of cool. It's like things are sort of tailing off into space there like that. So I think you're seeing this is already a pretty cool thing. We can change the position and that we can spread it out, get it closer together, all right? Let's take a look at the anchor point. This is where things get kind of interesting. I'm going to change the X value for the anchor point. It's going to start twisting things around. How about the Y value now? Up or down? There we go. I change the scale a little bit more like that. More anchor point business. Rotate some more. Now it's going to get more interesting too. What's really cool, let me put these guys a little bit closer together. Like so. Looks like this snake going off in the distance. Let's scale them down a little bit more. Twist them around a little bit more. I think you're getting a sense for how this all can work out here. Change the anchor point some more. We can then do what's called offset. I go up here a little bit. The offset says, what is the first thing? Right now, zero is the first thing. That's the zero right there. But I can move the offset. I can animate this guy as if it's some little device, some little snake flying on the screen like that and twisting around on the screen just by animating the offset. How cool is that? I can also put them all in the same size and place. Let's go down here and set the anchor point back to zero, zero again. Zero, tab, zero, and set the position back to zero. Zero, so they're right on top of each other. We'll set the scale to 100%. Okay. 
and I'll rotate them a little bit. Let me put this over here to the side. Let's see what happens when you rotate them. Like that looks kind of interesting, right? Well, let's just expand them a little bit and see what happens. How cool is that? Look at that. Whoa. Pretty neat. Take them back down to 100% again. 100. Click away from there. I want to see what happens if I rotate them and change the anchor point. Let's watch this. I'll take the anchor point for Y. Move it down. I can see how we can create this sort of flower. Move it up by grabbing this whole thing so you can see it all there. Now we don't see all 15 petals because the degree setting is just a little bit too high. If we divide 15 into 360, we get 25. So if we set the degrees to 25, then we'll see all 15 petals just like that. You could add another shape there right in the middle if you want to. Nevertheless, I think you get a sense of some of the fun stuff you can do with the repeater. So there you have it. That is a rundown on the shape effects.